Hi, everyone. My name is Diane Fritz, and I'm a senior consultant with iTrack. I have been with iTrack for over 11 years in a variety of roles. My main focus is the implementation of iTrack, as well as specific modules such as procedure competency, which will be, which will be our focus today. I also customize workflows and Power Automate. I would also like to introduce Corrine, who has done that herself, actually, um, who's our in-house consultant in sales support and is also our moderator for this session. So I'd like to thank her for being that today for me. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in our chat window, which is um, the number one on my screen below. Um, we'll get them to them at the end of our demonstration. And if you could also turn off your video, which I'm going to do now, that's our number two. And then if you could also mute yourself, that's the number three as well. So we're gonna start our session. So we have a lot to cover today and I'm very excited to get uh, to show you the procedure competency in iTrack. Um, so we're going to get going here. So our focus today, as I said, is procedure competency. However, I want to mention training the component in iTrack as well because training and procedure competency really go hand in hand. Both allow you to track and maintain your employees' requirements for their, position, their positions and tasks they perform. Training our cor courses or other requirements the employees would take, either externally or internally, such as their WMIS or first aid, where procedures allow you for a series of steps and tasks to be defined, their related hazards and concerns, their risks, and their recommended controls to mitigate those risks. We can then measure an employee's level of competency for the procedure. So with both training and procedures, we have several options in how we can measure and test the employee. So procedures in iTrack may be a job safety analysis or a standard operating procedure, but procedures can also be a variety of measurable components which make up your jobs or role you want to assess competency on. For example, a truck driver. How do we know a driver is competent? We look at what the driver is responsible for and we itemize those as procedures. So let's say they're responsible for weekly hour log entry, which has details on travel, rests, and stops. How do we deem them competent on this? So what we do is we create a procedure with a name of weekly log. We don't relate any steps the competence based on their manager's satisfaction with how the driver maintains and submits their logs. So we continue to create these really simple procedures for the various items a truck driver is responsible for. And this is one of the great things about iTrack. We see this with other areas of iTrack as well, if you're familiar with it. It's the flexibility of it. We can have very simple procedures and we can have very complex procedures as well, which we're going to get into as we're going to get into as we get further down this demonstration. What we're going to do as we're demonstrating this is we're going to talk about different people in your organization. And I think this is the best way to demonstrate this module. Uh, I want to show you how different individuals are going to interact with this module specifically. So I just want to show you four different people that would interact. So we're going to talk about the author. So we have to have someone who's responsible for authoring our procedures in the portal and on the mobile. So that's going to be me. I'm going to be the author. Then we're going to have Jane. So Jane's the employee. So she has procedure competency records assigned to her by a job role. So what job roles do is they allow a way to group together procedures that have a common factor for employees. So this could be site specific, for example. We then add employees to the job role. The employee receives an outstanding procedure competency record for each procedure. And then they are responsible for reviewing the procedure competency records. But then we have a supervisor. Our supervisor is Bob. So Bob is Jane's supervisor and he's responsible for assessing Jane. So some procedure competencies will be assessed by a supervisor or manager. It's really depending on your requirements as an organization. 
So where we're going to be discussing different options uh, we have available for who can assess an employee. And then we have Jim, so he's our company assessor. So this might be your super trainer or another individual in your organization who's responsible for the overall assessment of the employees. So they have the permission to assess any employee. They can assess Jane and Bob. So first we're gonna start with the procedure author. So what is authoring? So procedures are designed to be managed in the portal, and they're designed to be authored in the portal. So if you're familiar with iTrack currently, um, think about form types. Form types are designed to be managed and uh, designed in the Dynamics environment. So procedures are very different. They're designed to be authored and managed in the portal. It's very different. It's very unique in that sense. So now your supervisors and your leads can do this from the portal and from our apps. Very unique. It's very exciting that way. So we have two paths uh, that a procedure can go down for um, being published. We can have an approval and a review process, or they can go straight to publish. So what we mean by this is we're offering a procedure and we might need some input. So I'm the author and I'm defining the various steps that go into that procedure and I need input from others within my uh, division or within my organization um, on those steps that I've defined. So I can put it through to the approval and review process they provide me feedback on those steps, and then we have an approval group that ultimately has a decision that say, yes, this is now ready to go into a published state. Only procedures that are in a published state are available for our employees to review and become competent to on. When they're in a draft, while well, I am authoring that procedure, they're not available for our employees to review. The other path a procedure can take um, that I'm authoring is that I can go straight from draft to publish, that we do not have to go down the approval process. So two very unique paths, depending on the type of procedure you're authoring and the requirements of your organization on what you need to do uh, based on your requirements. So procedures can be corporate or site specific. This is also nice as well. We can have an overall procedure that um, your corporate, at a corporate level, you can author and would be applicable to all employees. Or we can have site specific, right? Do you have um, a site specific piece of equipment um, that uh, they would author? Now, what's also nice about this is that um, we have one procedure that's already been defined for a piece of equipment and site B has a very similar piece of equipment, but there's slightly something different. They can duplicate the procedure that's already been created and make minor changes to it uh, and then publish that procedure for their site only. So this means we don't have to start from scratch. Um, we don't have to start right from scratch and author our own procedure when there's only slight changes to be made. So this offers a lot of flexibility, saves us time when we only have to make slight changes for our site specific procedures. So that's what I was just speaking about. So we can duplicate to make minor adjustments just for our sites. So our procedures can be revised with version history. So procedures are living documents. Uh, they are likely going to have to be revised. A uh, piece of equipment has a change. We need to make a revision of that procedure, but we want to keep our version history. And what's important with this is that as we're revising our procedure is that what's available to our employees to review is the published version, not the revision. The revision is not available until we publish it. So we can continue to make our edits because uh, that's in a draft version. And then when we publish it, it's going to be published with um, a new version number in increments of one. And our previous version 
will simply be superseded and inactivated. It's no longer available for employees to review, um, but it is available in the back end uh, for historical purposes. So this is obviously quite a big slide. So we're just going to zoom in here. So this is what, what I am authoring. So this is uh, in the portal. And this is what the template to author a procedure looks like. Uh, very similar to other styles uh, when you're in the portal. Uh, you'll notice there are the red asterisks. That means they are required fields and everything else is optional. So we need a name and we need a type. Um, so the types are what path it's going to take. Is it going to require approval or not? It's if it's going to go straight from draft to publish. So there are different options there. Uh, we have a procedure number that is optional as well. You notice I've highlighted some fields. Um, so these fields, we have potential and residual risks applies to as the business unit. We can also define at a facility. So this is if they are specific to a business unit and or a facility. Uh, critical, you notice I've highlighted this as well. We have group and subgroup. So at a group, uh, we can have subgroups related to our groups, which is quite nice. But also what is nice is at a group level, we can predefine the potential, residual, and critical. So if we have those predefined for our author, they will default as soon as they select the group. Now they can be updated, but it is nice that we can have those predefined for our authors as well. Uh, so when we're doing our assessment types, as I said, there are different options and this uh, determines uh, how our employees are going to interact with the competency record. We're going to get into that in a little bit, um, but I also want to just go down here a little bit and show you some more fields. So while we're authoring, you see I've highlighted hazards and controls. Um, so what these are is they pull from a master list from our Dynamics environment. So those two are maintained in Dynamics, but they pull from a master list. So they are uh, predefined for our authors. And then we have two text fields. Uh, if they are not located in the master list, this is definitely something that applies to site specific. Uh, if they're not in the master list, they can add text as well. And then down here, this is something new that was recently added are these multi selects. And you'll see it says procedure multi select one, procedure multi select two. That is because we can customize these for our clients. We can customize the labels and we can customize uh, what you can select in them. And what I'm actually going to do is just show you what those look like when we actually customize them. I'm just going to scroll down here. So what I did was I customized this label, applicable code of practice. And when I go in here, I've customized what is in the list. So I can just continue to select a few different options. Um, I can unselect if I selected the wrong one. I can also just backspace it and I can Select. So this one I hadn't put anything in, but as you can see, this just offers greater flexibility so you can categorize and uh, have greater um, reporting capabilities and for your end users and your authors just have some extra information in for them uh, when they're authoring as well. So just another new feature that we're quite happy to have in there for our clients. So now the first image I'm showing here is when we start to author. Um, this is more of our general information and this is within when we're adding a step. So we define our general information and then we start adding in all of our steps. And we're really gonna see what this looks like when we're reviewing as an employee. Um, but I just wanted to show you a few things. We obviously have a lot of fields here that are not required it just gives you greater flexibility on what you're able to define in a step. The only thing that's actually required is the name. At a step level, you can also have a description. You have text fields for hazards and controls. At a step level, you can define risk as well. 
uh, you can also define the perform by. So who is this step actually performed by? And that's just pulling from our job role list. What I really like to point out here is the attachments. So here we can have two things. Um, one of them is uh, images though. So we can add an image and we're, I'm gonna show you what this looks like when we're reviewing. So we can have inline images. Uh, so you could have an image of uh, different hazards or um, pieces of the equipment or what have you to really identify to your uh, employees who are reviewing the procedure what they need to be looking for. So it's really great. Another option here is a lot of you will already have your procedures as Word documents or PDFs. And when we're first moving to iTrack, it's quite daunting to, to think of all your procedures and moving them into iTrack and defining all the steps. And what we can do as our first phase is defining the general information and then importing as an attachment your procedure. So they can look at your PDF until you're doing uh, defining all of your steps. We can have your PDF in here and they can click and review your PDF as their procedure. And why we do that is that you can, can start to track their competency in iTrack and have the records for that. So you're starting to build your history on their competency records while you're also taking advantage of building um, your steps and everything in the background and using your existing PDFs and Word documents that you already have built for your um, competency program. Okay, so before we can go into our employees and start talking about them, one thing we need to understand is who uh, can assess um, a record. And uh, I know it seems like we're jumping ahead, but it's important to understand who can actually assess um, when we're talking about the employees. So we, we talked about Bob. So Bob's a supervisor and he's responsible for, um, he's going to be responsible for assessing Jane's record. So if you're familiar with iTrack, um, you're familiar with the employee record. And if you're not familiar with, with iTrack, um, if you're fairly new or, or if, you're, if you haven't um, seen iTrack before, uh, we have an employee record and we have different fields on the employee record. One of them is called the reports to field. So on an employee record, we can define an individual that the employee reports to. So it's generally in a, man a manager. So it's an individual that we define that the employee reports to. So it's generally a manager or a supervisor. We then have a second individual we can define on the employee record. So if we defined the manager as the reports to, the second individual would be the supervisor. Or so reports to, it's the manager we've identified. The second individual is the the supervisor. So either one of these individuals has the right to uh, assess um, the employee's competency record in, in uh, iTrack. We then recognize that it's not always an individual who needs to assess an employee. Sometimes it's a group of users. Um, for example, if you have a site that has a group of leads uh, and it could be depending on the shift, it depends on the lead that's on the shift. So we have this group of leads that could be, let's say five or it could be 50. Um, it doesn't matter the number that, of leads that there are. We have all these leads and it just depends which lead is on shift that's going to assess that employee. Well, now we can't put them in the report to reviewed by because I can only put one individual in those fields. So what we did is we uh, added the ability to have a team um, on the employee record. And what a team is, it's simply a group of users. So any member of that team has the right to assess an employee, that employee. So now we have the ability to have the report to who's an individual assess Jane. 
We have the reviewed by who is an individual assessed Jane. And now we have any member of the reporting team who's related to Jane's employee record can assess Jane as well. So we've really given a lot of options on who has the right to assess Jane as an employee. And then we take it one step further. We have uh, these, these procedures and we say, okay, depending on the procedure depends how we want our employee to be assessed. How do we want them to achieve their competency in this procedure itself? So we have three different options on how they're going to achieve their, their competency for the procedure. First, we have what's called a self-assessment. So a self-assessment means the employee receives the procedure. They have two ways of reviewing the procedure. They review the procedure and then they simply agree to a statement that says, I have reviewed this procedure and I understand. And they do a little check mark and that's it. They re their competency record is updated from outstanding to reviewed. The other option is we relate an exam to the procedure and they have to successfully complete that exam. And once they do that, their uh, competency record is updated from outstanding to reviewed. So that is a self-assessment. Um, a manager, supervisor does not have to assess them. It's a self-assessment. The next is an assessor assessment. So an assessor assessment is completed by one of those three options we just discussed. That reports to individual, which might be their manager, the reviewed by, which may be their supervisor, or a member of that reporting team that um, could be one of those leads we talked about. Or it could also be that Jim we talked about at the very beginning, who's that company-wide assessor, could be your, your company-wide lead trainer. Um, so what an assessor assessment means is the employee does not do anything, the assessor is going to come and they're going to review the employee and they're going to deem them either partial or competent in that procedure. Lastly, we're going to do a combination of the two. So first, the employee needs to review the procedure and agree to that statement saying, yes, I have reviewed. Once the employee reviews, the, it updates to a status of reviewed, then one of those assessors, their manager, their supervisor, their lead um, is going to go in and assess them and they will mark them either partial or competent. So we have three very distinct options. We have the self-assessment that will only ever result in a status of reviewed, and that is by the employee either agreeing to a statement or successfully completing an exam. We have the assessor assessment where uh, one of our um, managers or supervisor who's been identified uh, on the employee record or as an accompany assessor is going to complete an assessment and deem them competent or partial. Or we have a combination of the two where the employee first does the review and then one of our assessors, our managers or supervisors is going to come in and complete the assessment and mark them competent or partial. So now what we're going to do is we're going to review the employee and how they interact with the procedure competency. So our employee is Jane. So Jane has employee competency records assigned to her and she's responsible for reviewing and being competent in the tasks related to her job. So in the, port in the iTrack portal, uh, she has the activity page and she has a grid called Outstanding Competencies. All procedure competencies related to a job role for Jane, which she needs to complete her review, will be here for her. She also has her personal page in the competency grid. All procedure competencies related to Jane 
regardless of their status, will be here. So her standing, her competent, her partial, her reviewed will be here. And we're going to take a look at that as well. A third item I want to mention that I'm not going to demo today, but just to keep in mind, on a process flow or form, we have what's called the meeting control. So if you use the meeting control, a procedure can be reviewed here. And all employees who attend and sign off on a meeting receive a reviewed competency record when the process flow is, is closed. So now we're going to go into the portal as Jane and see how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sign out of the portal because I'm logged in here as myself. And I'm going to sign in as Jane. And I just wanted to show you this because if um, you haven't seen the multi-factor authentication, so this is what happens. I'm logging in as Jane and I'm going to get a prompt on my phone for my authentication app. Uh, I'm, I'm signing in and do I approve this sign in? And I do. And so that's going to authenticate me and sign me in as Jane which is my test user too. Now, if I wanted to sign in to, let's say the dynamics, um, the dynamics environment as well, I would automatically sign in because it is single sign in. So if I had opened up anything else where um, this user was um, also a user, I wouldn't have to sign in again. So this is my activity page and these are my outstanding competencies. So this is where I have an action to complete on these. So what we are going to do, you can see I have an assessment type of both and self-assessment. And I have to review them. So both, I have to complete my review first before my supervisor or manager complete their review, their assessment. And on the self-assessment, I also have to complete my review as well. So we are going to complete my welding. So I'm just going to click on review. It's going to open up the procedure and it's going to automatically open up the review dialog. And you'll notice it opens it up in a nice review. So this is a procedure and it opens up the steps. It shows me the risk. That's what the color coding is. These are the inline images that um, had been attached. This is quite nice, as you can see, you can put in your images, they line up quite nicely. It will show me the text um, that for any of the fields that were that had text associated with, it shows me the risk, the controls, it shows me the residual risk. I have a couple options, I can just collapse this on my own, but if I click review, it actually checks it off and collapses it for me and opens the next step. And again, I can see all of the information. There's quite a lot of controls here. I can see the residual risk. So we're going to be super quick readers and just go through this. Again, this is a medium risk. I can see the images, see all the controls, the residual risk. Quite nice. Really quite nice how the setup is done. We just click review. Nice images, everything's quite nice. This one's a little bit longer on the control so we can just scroll down to make sure that we're reading everything that we need to. And we just keep going through, make sure we're reviewing everything. All the images that come through. If we had a document that was associated here, as I mentioned, we can have documents. There would be a download link here uh, unfortunately, I don't have any documents related to this, um, but it would simply just be a download document uh, that they would be prompted to download. So once we're done, this is the acknowledgement statement. So I acknowledge that I've reviewed. You'll notice down here, I have a close button. I need to acknowledge. I have to acknowledge, and once I do, I get the save and close. So once I save and close, I can just hit my close button, and you'll notice it's dropped off. So I've completed that one. I'm going to open this one. This self-assessment has an exam related to it. I'm not going to complete the exam. I just want to show you what that exam looks like. As you can see, it just says preparing exam. So 
and I'm just going to click on write exam. We're not going to go through this one. So exams um, have their questions and they're all multiple choice. So you would just go through and if you successfully complete the exam, then you'll receive your reviewed record. If you don't, um, then, uh, then you would need to review it again. We're just going to back out of here and we're just going to go down to our personal page and take a look there as well. So the personal page is different. So we have our competency grid and you will see here, I see assessor assessment. And I see that because my competency grid on my personal page shows me an overview of everything. Um, everything that's related to me for my competency. So you can see here my, my welding is at the reviewed status. So now I'm waiting. I will have to be assessed by my manager or supervisor. Um, my operating skid steer, I can't do anything with this status. The, it's an assessor assessment. My manager has to um, complete the assessment on me. Now we're just going to go back into our... Demo. Now we're going to take a look at the supervisor. So Bob is our supervisor. And he's responsible for assessing Jane. So in the portal, he will also use his activity page. And he has a grid called the Outstanding Team Competencies. So all procedure competencies that the employees have completed their review will be here, as well as any assessor assessments that Bob needs to complete. So we saw Jane has an assessor assessment, so that will be here for Bob to complete. He also has what's called the team page. So he can filter and select employees, and he can review Jane's procedure competencies, and he can also assess from this page as well. So there's also what's called the competency page. This is optional. It really depends on your requirements if you want to provide this to the managers and supervisors. Um, but they can also search and select employees. Uh, they have a nice competency grid and they can also assess from here. I'm not going to show you this page from Bob's perspective. We're going to wait um, from our company perspective as, and I'm going to demo that page from, his, for, from Jim, Jim's perspective. Now we're going to go in and demo from Bob. I already have Bob logged in. So I'm just going to refresh this grid because right now we just see I have one item here. So just to refresh your grid, you just have to collapse it. I should have just had to collapse it, but we'll just Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong grid. Outstanding team competencies. There's cops it. Oh, there she's right here. So now we have Jane Smith here. She completing completed her welding. So I can now um, review her assessment. So if I just complete action. So now this is going to open the assessment page. So this is quite different. Um, we can see the general information up top here from the procedure itself. Along the left, quite a bit different. We have partial competence. So this is where I select if she's partial or competent within this assessment. Um, I have my save and save and close. I have the ability to add comments within each step. You can see each step is listed here. I have the ability to add attachments and I also have the ability to add tasks. So I could add a task, um, let's say if I'm marking her partial on a, on, um, a procedure, uh, I might need to review some items with her or I might need a, another supervisor to, read some, uh, to review something with her. I could add a task for that to be done. I could add some comments. Um, I'll do it on step two.
and I'm going to mark her competent. If we just refresh that one, you just notice that it's dropped off. Okay, and now if I go to the team page, and notice here I have these little grids. So this is just um, an overview of the competency for any of my employees for self assessment and assessor assessment and where they are in each of their. Uh, for each of the statuses. And then what I do is I can use this drop down and I can select a specific employee to go to their page. So this page looks very similar to um, the personal page. And I can expand the grid. The difference is the permissions. Okay. You'll notice that the self assessments are grayed out. I'm not able to select them because I have no action to take against them. Where um, You'll see here, competent, I can select that. And outstanding for assessor assessment, I can select that. The reason I can select the competent one again is that I can change it. So if it was competent, I could change it to partial or vice versa. Um, and I can also complete this assessor assessment as well. I could open it, this one. You notice it's the exact same, whether I'm completing it from the activity page or whether I'm completing it from the team page. Maybe we need to work on this step a bit. Her partial. Okay, so now we have a partial and a competent. That is from the supervisor's perspective. So lastly, we have our company uh, assessor. And as I said, this is Jim. So this might, as we said before, this might be your super trainer in your organization. You may not have a, a super trainer or a company assessor. So this is a company-wide assessor. He can assess any employee, including Jane and Bob. Um, and so what, what Jim has the ability to do is a couple things. So on the competency page, uh, he can search and select any employee. So he can review Bob or Jane's procedure competency records and he can assess their competency. On the procedure page, uh, he has something unique as well. So assessors can add assessment criteria to a procedure, tap, procedure step at any time to the procedure, whether it's in draft or a published state. Now, normally you can't edit a procedure and you'll see what I mean uh, when we go into the procedure. Once it's published, it's read only. But assessors, um, a company assessor, has the ability to go into a step and add assessment criteria. So that's a criteria that those supervisors and managers at a step level should be looking for while they're doing their assessments. So it's quite unique. So we're going to go in and take a look at what Jim can do. First, we're going to go into the procedure. Now, when I first had shown you from um, my perspective as an author, I wasn't on this page. I was on the library page. I was already um, authoring a procedure. But when you first land on procedures now, you're on this nice view. It's quite nice. You can do your filtering from here, um, and uh, we can customize these views. So it's quite nice. I'm just going to go in um, to the operating skid steer. And 
So this is a published procedure. I'm going to go into step two. You'll see all of this is read only. I don't have any save and close here. I'm not able to edit any of these fields. Not able to add attachment or anything like this. But assessment criteria, I am. And there's already two that have been added. There's been uh, assessment criteria of direct observation and interview. So I'm just going to add a third. I'm going to add note. And I'm going to save and close. We also have the save and new function, which is quite handy. So now we have three assessment criteria on uh, step two. And I'm going to close that. And then I'm just going to back out here. So now I'm going to go into the competency area. And you'll see here we have a couple different options. We land on the view, which lists uh, the employees. And obviously we have we have an inactive view, but we can customize different views there for you as well. Um, the blues are the hyperlinks. So we have hyperlinks to employees and to procedures. I'm just going to click on the competency training summary. This is quite nice. Uh, it lands on Jim because uh, that's who we're logged in as. I'm actually just going to select myself. So this refreshes. Taking a quick look at this page, we have some nice donuts up here. Quite nice, shows me how many records I'm competent in. I don't have a lot of information in here, but you can imagine once this starts building, it's quite nice. So this is a summary of our training and our procedures. So we're going to go into our assessor assessment of operating skid steer, which is one that we just added our assessment criteria to. We're going to go into step two. And now you'll see we had these three assessment criteria, and we can check these off and add our, com add our comments. Um, we can just keep adding comments to these. It just adds a little more detail than just having assessor comments. This really tells them what they should be looking for. Um, and they can just keep building on that. Of course, we'll mark Diane competent. And as we do that, our donut chart updates. That's what our company-wide assessor is responsible for. So our recertification. So I would definitely want to go through this. Um, our recertification is how you keep your employees safe. And there are four recertification, four ways recertifications work with procedures. So our first is our valid for. So our, it's the number of months a procedure is valid for. Uh, so your procedure might be valid for 12 or 36 months. An expiry date is set on the procedure competency record based on the number of the months and when the employee re completes the requirements. So for an example, um, you might decide this is based on risk. So if your risk is low, your procedures might be valid for 36 months. If your risk is high, they might be valid for 12 months. Uh, and that would mean every 12 months your uh, employees need to be recertified on those specific procedures. Procedure revision recertification. So when you revise a procedure, um, you can choose to have your employees recertified at that time. Procedure res revision recertification self-assessment only. It's a bit of a mouthful. So this is uh, only available when you're doing a revision and the assessment type is both. So what this option means is you're doing a revision that was the assessment type of both. You could choose to say, okay, we want our employees to um, be recertified, but we don't want them to go through 
them reviewing and their managers having to assess them again. We just want them to do the self or self assessment. We want them to do that review. And lastly, we could have um, when we do a revision, it might be really minor. So we only want to notify our employees. So we could choose to do that as well. We made minor revisions. Everyone should be notified, but we're not going to affect their competency records. Lastly, um, for those of you familiar with uh, iTrack, um, we had some very key highlights in 414 uh, that I wanted to point out. So that employee reporting team that I was talking about, if you're familiar with iTrack on the employee record, you've always seen that report to reviewed by. The reporting team came in 414. And that is used with procedure competency and training. Um, it's something that I'm personally excited about because um, it just expands how we can use both of those modules. The procedure valid for, so that recertification based on the number of months the procedure is valid for, uh, was expanded on in 414. So that's very exciting as well. The activity page, my outstanding competencies, outstanding team competencies, team competencies, the ability for employees reports to be reviewed by reporting team. To manage competencies from the activity page was uh, redesigned in 414. Very exciting. We used to manage those things from uh, strictly the team and personal page. The ability to do from the activity page is huge. New procedure fields, uh, the procedure number, subgroups related to groups, and those two customizable multi-selects was done in 414. Uh, very exciting. In the procedure page, having that view, which we can filter and customize for procedures, was also introduced in 414. So procedure competency in uh, the iTrack mobile. Um, so we have it available on our mobile apps. So you're able to um, um, create procedures, add, edit, create. You can self-review a procedure on the app. You can complete an assessment on the app as well. It's, it looks very similar to create the procedure, to add the steps. Um, you can also complete uh, an assessment. You can mark them partial and competent. I also wanted to lightly touch on, if you were in our session yesterday on procedure competency and teams, um, I talked uh, about I won't show the video. I know we're getting short on time here. Um, the competent, the ability to have um, channels and um, the ability to have dynamics and dynamics tabs within uh, teams. So I wanted to bring that up as well, that we could have bring in our um, different areas that would be relevant to competency and training right into teams to, to manage from that perspective as well, as well as for our managers and supervisors. I think that's a great option if you are looking at uh, integrating teams and eye track and dynamics, it's, a, it's another great option to have. So I did wanna mention that. Okay, Karine, if we have any questions. All right, it look like we have any questions at the moment. Uh, so thank you everyone for coming uh, today and uh, I hope you learned a lot. I know I definitely did as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can send them to support at neosystems.com and I'll also put in uh, the chat box a link for the um, the full conference schedule should you want to go and attend any other sessions. Oh, I also want to mention coming up um, right at 11.15 uh, is Secure Energy, um, our client uh, Secure and Kevin Collins. We just implemented um, competency with them and he's going to be telling his story. It'll be a great uh, and interesting um, session if you would like to um, take a, a listen in on that. He's a great presenter. Excellent. Well, thanks, Diane.